All right, average rate of change, the volume. So the volume of a spherical balloon changes with the radius. At what rate, and you know, we'll get to the point because we'll do other things than just finding rates that you understand when you have a work problem, what are they even asking me to find? But right now, okay, I'm gonna find the slope, apparently is something. Uh, does the volume change with respect to the radius when r equals two feet? So basically they've given me my x value is two, but I don't see a form volume formula. Now, students panic. Well, do we have to know all these formulas? Something like this, well, no, I would have given you this. I wouldn't have just given you this problem. Maybe on homework, you know, they don't give it to you. <clears throat> but if this question would have been on a quiz, I would have given you this formula. All right, so we're good to go. I know I want to find a rate. I keep seeing this over and over and over. The only difference is instead of X1s here, I put R for rate. Made sense to me, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing where you see those R's. I'm going to put two. That's my radius that I'm interested in, okay? What's happening at that exact moment of time? How is the volume changing at when exactly the radius is two feet? Okay, there's my formula. So just, you know, look at this and make sure, you know, if you're writing it down, it's fine, but then let's take the time that you really understand this step because this is where students struggle of what I is I'm taking that formula, the volume formula, and if you notice, and I know you hate it when teachers do this, I skip the step. Because I said after a while, you're gonna be able to skip the step. Some of you will be able to just go right straight to that step. Some of you need this step and you need the next step. Well, what was the next step? Was plugging that two in there. And then some of you will get to the point where you don't need this step anymore you need that one. And so for a while, write these steps out, okay? I skipped it, I didn't write it in here, but if you need to see this, oh, well all she did was evaluate this R, two plus H, and the formula, that's why it's cubed, and then here all she did was evaluate it at two. <clears throat> okay, so that's all I've done. This is the part you need for the quiz today. Uh, that, yeah, all right. What did you see yellow? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, and, and this is um, a formula that I probably wouldn't give you because I'd say, hey, you shouldn't learn that back in algebra, okay? So this, is, this isn't something I probably, and I didn't give you on the quiz, okay? So things like this that aren't, I don't really consider formulas, you know, are things that hopefully, what I would do is, um, what the heck's going on? What I would do is I would simply today. <clears throat> All right, so that's going to be my next step. Now I'm back off into algebra land. I'm going to take this 2 plus h times 2 plus h times 2 plus h. Certainly you could have done it that way. Or I'm going to use this. And that's what I get. Well, that's kind of crazy. I don't know why it's doing that. All right, so all I've done was cube that out. Okay, so that's, that's all I've done. This step here, as hopefully you can see, is that's my A cubed, saying that's my A, that's my B, that's my B cubed, this is my three times my A squared B, I don't think I'm going to get it to fit in there, and then that's my three AB squared. <coughs> Okay, so in other words, hopefully you can look at this and see, well, all I've done here was take two cubed. I took, in this case here, I took three times two squared, which is four, 12, and so on. So that's how I got those values. Okay, just be sure you can do that for your quiz today. Now, I just keep doing algebra and I'm gonna just multiply all this out. That's the thing that was missing is I was missing a term, half price books, a place like that. And they have the, I've seen students with them, it's like a laminated sheet. It's still showing what I'm doing. It's a laminated sheet with a bunch of algebra rules on it. I mean, I'd invest in one of those. They're not that expensive. All right, so now is what better happen? And it happened because as you can see, everything that's left here has H's. If this did not happen, then I apparently did something wrong up here. So remember that for the quiz today. And now I found. 
So my H's cancel. All I did the step before was I got rid of my 32's over 3. I factor out my H left with something numerical. Things with H's I can set equal 0. Okay, so that's all I've done were these steps to get to the point where, and you know, again, you might say, well, why, if you're letting this go to zero, why not let it go to zero up here? Can't, 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 now I can. Another question in my um, Tuesday, Thursday class, somebody asked, what if your H's, what if you can't factor out and your H's don't cancel? You did something wrong again, okay? This will always happen meaning the, the numbers again will cancel out and your H's will cancel out so you can get to this point, okay? If I plug in these are zero, let H go to zero, then I get my answer because if I let H go to zero, all of that goes away and I end up with 16 pi, which says when the radius is two feet, the volume is changing at a rate of 16 pi cubic feet per foot, which means a small change in the radius would result in a change of 16 pi cubic feet in the volume of a sphere. So all that's saying is if I could exactly measure exactly the radius of two feet, if I could, then I could know what the rate, the volume's changing. All right, now, again, these slides are in uh, Blackboard, okay? So hopefully we'll see what the recording did if I have to re-record that. Um,